Hey, what's up, YouTube fam? This is your boy, Camo, and I got a kind of a different video for you today. Uh, I just want to talk briefly about uh, suicide prevention. This is uh, September Suicide Prevention Month, and I feel obligated to talk about it because not only do I have a family member that um, did um, go that way, but uh, I myself was very, very close to uh, going that down that path when I was um, in my mid twenties. And so without going into details, because really it doesn't matter what the details are, because there could be a number of reasons why you would ever think about doing that. Uh, and I don't want anyone to think that someone's reasons are, I don't wanna say more valid, but that someone Oftentimes I feel like when people are talking about hard times and, 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 and tough times and, and things that they're going through in life or things that they've gone through in their life, people try to make it a competition like, oh, you think you got it bad. Hear my story. And the fact of the matter is, is in my, in my opinion, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because everyone has their own hell, their own low points, right? Their own rock bottom. And just because what someone else is going through, if you were going through that, you would be fine and you wouldn't have taken it as badly as they would, doesn't mean the roles can't be reversed. There could be things that you are going through or have gone through that almost took you out, that you hit rock bottom, that that same person would have been like, what's the big deal about that? So for me personally, it doesn't matter whether it's over a relationship, over family, over addiction, over fine, uh, money or any myriad of things I can't even think of right now. It, to me, it doesn't matter what your reason for getting to that point. It's just about getting out of that point, basically. just. And uh, for me, again, it was, look, and I've, I've talked about this in some of my other videos, so I won't go too much into detail, but I have one I have one friend in my life right now that is my best friend, but she is the only person who knew me and was friends with me back when I was a different person. And when I say that, I mean that oftentimes, and just because obviously I'm on camera, it's a different story. And I am talking to you like you are really listening to me and you actually care what I have to say, like we're friends. And I hope someday we are friends, if we're not already. Uh, I do have some subscribers I already, I already feel really close to. Um, and you know who you are. But for those of you that don't yet, I hope that one day I get to feel that way with all of you. I really do. But that being said, I'm just talking to you like you're my friend and I'm just being honest with you. I have one friend in my life that is friends with me now that was friends with me then. And I'm surprised she stuck around because I was, a set, like I said, a different person. I was the king Again, this is all perspective. This is my perspective. I was the king of negativity. I was the king of pity parties, which is why, again, again, I don't know why she was able to stay friends with me because I can't imagine being a friend of mine back then was easy because if you imagine that every time you hang out with somebody, they're going to find a way to make it about them and about feeling sorry for them, which is what I did. Uh, I'm not proud of this, by the way. I'm just being honest. And I feel like you have to be honest and self-aware to get yourself out of the shit, which is what I had to do. But it was through the help of a friend. This friend basically told me that all of my misery, and I'm not saying this is going to apply for everybody, but all of my misery, which he, he was right, was my own doing. And I don't mean that in that I put myself in a, in a bad situation. I don't mean that um, I deserved what happened to me to have happened to me. None of that. What I mean is, and what he meant was, is that I was choosing to live in that past. I was choosing to think about it every day. I was choosing to talk about it every day. I was choosing to let my emotions get to me every single day, thinking about this thing, that really wasn't a factor anymore, but I was just holding on to it. And like I said, this is not going to apply to everybody, but 
that made sense to me. And the next day, while it was definitely a brand new day, and I was I had this new self awareness that I did not have before as silly as it sounds. It wasn't that I was cured. And I hate when people make it sound like, oh, I'm cured now. Like, and I'm sure that for some people, they do have that experience where the next day, their whole life is different. For me, and I've said this before in other videos, it was like someone showed me where the weeds were in my brain and showed me where the tool was to pull the weeds. That was what my friend ultimately did for me that day. So the next day, I had to start pulling weeds. And there's some days that were easier than other days. And it was definitely a long process. But I am now very, very happy to say that I am nothing like the old me, at least when it comes to that. <laughs> there's definitely things about me that are still very much the same me from, you know, 15, 20 years ago. But I'm very grateful to this friend for, for showing me that and for all my friends that, that were there at the time, even though, like I said, I'm only friends with one of them now. But I'm grateful to anyone in my life that was there for me at that time. And I remember feeling a couple things that I think anyone who's been here in this place will know what I'm talking about. You feel alone. And you feel like it's going to last forever. And you feel like there's no hope. And you feel like no one cares. And you feel, this part is more specific to me, but I'm, I'm feeling like maybe you'll say the same thing. I felt like the world would be a better place if I wasn't here. That was legit the thought that kind of pushed me over the edge to actually really closely doing it. And uh, that thought, while it scared the hell out of me, it was also, sadly, very comforting that the people in my life, my family, my friends, would be better off if I wasn't around. They wouldn't have to worry about me. They wouldn't have to hear me complain and pity and all that kind of stuff. But obviously I didn't. Um, without being too graphic, I think I can safely say that um, I had some kind of pills in my hand. And I looked at them. And I saw the faces of people I would be leaving behind. But the really, really weird part is that there were some faces that I hadn't met yet. Whether you believe me or not, there were some faces that were my friends and family at the time. There were some faces that were people I had known in the past. But there were some faces of people I haven't met yet. And it was a combination of well, who are these people? But also, wow, look at all these people I'll, I'll be leaving. And again, I kind of went to a selfish thought of like, well, they may be better without me, but I don't want to be without them. Selfish as it was, that was my thought. And that's what stopped me. And I just share this story to anybody that has ever gone through that or that is going through that. To let them know, I don't have the answers of how to make you feel better. But if just simply knowing my story and now knowing where I am today and that I'm actually a very happy guy, I love life. I wake up every morning <laughs> very perky and happy, which annoys my wife because she's like, don't talk to me until I've had coffee. <laughs> and I don't need coffee. I'm just a happy guy. Um, I love to make people laugh. I love to laugh. I've done stand-up comedy for since 2010, and it's one of my joys. Uh, I don't think it'll, it'll ever be a career for me, but it's definitely um, a hobby that I'm passionate about. I think I can say that safely. Um, but I'm here today, 
and I'm alive and I'm happy and uh, I had to do the work. And so if you're there, you might have to do the work too, but just know that I'm living proof that you can hit a rock bottom and you could feel alone and feel like it's going to last forever and feel like nobody's going to care and nobody's going to miss you. And you'd be wrong. You'd be wrong. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. Take care.